All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. I think we will get started. Uh, we have a full agenda today. And as you can see from the title, it's a deep dive of server-to-server um, uh, -server and OAuth identity platform. So I have a lot of information to share with you. Um, before I get started, I just want to get a quick poll on how many of you have um, heard about OAuth and S2S? Awesome. And how many of you actually have seen like a one slider so far and not actually the deep dive? Many of you. OK. So you come to the right session. So really, this is primarily I'm going to focus on going further deeper into why we did S2S OAuth identity platform in uh, SharePoint 2013 and how we have used that platform to enable several scenarios, including the app model uh, specific scenario. Okay. Many of you have seen the sessions on you know, how to do the app model, create a marketplace apps, and how do you do the um, self-hosted or the cloud-hosted apps and so on. But the fundamental uh, core piece behind that scenario is this particular identity platform. So with that, let me uh, get started. So I'm Seisha Mani. Um, I'm a program manager in um, Microsoft and uh, SharePoint team specifically focusing on the security and identity platform pieces. Um, before SharePoint, I was actually working also on the Active Directory team, uh, focusing on the Windows Identity Foundation uh, framework. Many of you are probably already aware of that. Um, so now I'm in the SharePoint role. So let me get uh, to move to the next screen, if it let me to. There we go. Um, so the agenda for today is primarily two key topics. One is deep dive onto the S2S platform and how it is used to build uh, the cross-server scenarios in SharePoint, that is from out-of-the-box scenarios, how we have used this platform to build it, focusing on the online scenario, um, on-premise, and then the hybrid scenario. Um, and then the second major topic is on deep dive into how the line of business on-premise and hybrid scenarios can be built using the same uh, SharePoint regarding the S2S identity platform. So basically, the first major topic is how we build it. In the last two years, we have enabled those, you know, build the platform, build those scenarios. And then the second major piece is how you can make this use of the same platform and build your own applications. And I'm going to touch bases primarily on the platform aspects of that piece. So the key takeaway from this session is, number one, um, out of the box, SharePoint uh, takes the cross-services collaboration to the next level, uh, including the hybrid scenarios. And the second key takeaway is there are several new opportunities for you to build the cross-service and hybrid solutions um, based on this identity platform. And you can basically enhance and leverage the same platform and build the creative solutions with them. So those are the key takeaways uh, from this uh, session. So let's dive into the first major agenda, deep diving on the S2S platform, how we used it to build uh, the SharePoint scenarios. So the first major question is, is it possible to access the data across the hosting environments between on-premise and online. It doesn't matter where the data is. I should be able to access the data. And also, the data is sourced under different apps. So apps are not the same app. So it could be on-premise, I have my own LOB application. And then online, I have SharePoint online, for example. Then there are different apps itself. So how do I get access to that particular data? Same thing, I'm on on-premise, SharePoint on-premise. I have Exchange Online. How do I able to get the same data across these apps? So you can see there are like two layers of uh, two layers here. One is the hosting layer, where the data is hosted, and then there is an app itself, who's the author of that particular data. So is it possible to access such a way in data in, that are in this particular way in a more secure manner? Right. The answer is yes. The S2S identity platform is here for to make that possible. And let's see how we are going, to, how the platform is making it possible. Now, before I get to the platform, just to get this context, what are all the scenarios we have enabled in 2013 that uses this platform, 
right? Many of you have probably already seen lots of demos on these scenarios uh, so far in the last three days. And so the list I'm going to show you will be some, for some, some of you familiar for you as well. So let's take a look at what are the uh, specific scenarios uh, that are enabled with um, this identity platform. So there are three categories here. So SharePoint to Exchange. So that's the from SharePoint service app talking to the Exchange app. Um, there are e-discovery, site mailbox scenario, project task sync, and then high resolution photos. I'm not going to go to the details on individual scenarios, but this is primarily just a primer on what scenarios have enabled. The second major category is SharePoint to SharePoint. Like for example, translation services. So you can on the fly translate the documents as you upload them. Actually under the hood, that scenario uses the S2S platform because it is making a call across the SharePoint forms in order to achieve the translation capability. Then we have a hybrid scenarios, uh, primarily SAP Duet hybrid scenario. There was a session yesterday. I'm sure some of you might have gone into that. Uh, then there's a hybrid search. Like when I'm searching for a specific term in on-premise, I should be able to bring in search results from online as well. So that's the hybrid search uh, scenario. And I have called out related contents in my slide, later in the slide. So if you have missed those sessions, you can always, you know, the recordings available, so you can go and uh, see them after the fact as well. The last one is like SharePoint to MTW, which is the multi-tenant workflow service. And this is where we are triggering the workflows from within the SharePoint, and then the workflows have to come back to SharePoint to get access to some of the data, right? So this is, in a nutshell, the scenarios that are implemented or enabled in SharePoint 2013 using this platform, okay? Now let's see how it was implemented. So the key thing that I actually wanted to make sure is many of you are aware of terminologies, some of the key terminologies from SharePoint 2013. Um, and let me just quickly go through, like recap on what those are. Times-based authentication. So how many of you are familiar with times-based authentication? Yeah? Right now, I mean, again, in 2013, as you know, it's the default, right? Windows claims is the default. And we encourage you, we recommend you to move to claims-based authentication model. And all the, this particular platform and all the scenarios that I talked about, they all depend on the claims-based authentication. And you actually will see in this talk how that claims infrastructure was the key part in enabling this S2S OAuth capability. So claims-based authentication is basically claim is an attribute about the user, and um, it's not specifically contained to a group. You know, you can have any user attribute that is coming in as a claim. So that's one of the, one of the major benefit of the claims-based authentication is now you are able to um, authorize based on the claims of the user itself, not necessarily the group that he belongs to. The second major aspect is security token service. So this is a service that issues uh, security tokens intended for the relying party applications. So this is the key role, uh, this is a key component in this platform uh, that basically makes sure the two applications can talk to each other. It can issue a security token, and then the application can present that to some other application or use it themselves. Um, trust broker, so this is kind of the same STS component, but it has in a different role. The role is really, it actually issues a token to an app A so that app A can talk to app B. Now, both app A and app B has to be known to the uh, trust broker. So that's why it's called a trust broker. So the app A and app B doesn't trust each other directly. They just trust the trust broker. And the trust broker is the one that is kind of the man in the middle who will say, I'll issue a token for app B, provided I know what that app B is, as well as I can authenticate who the app A is. So that's the role of the trust broker, the key role that it plays here. And in OAuth, there are another key new terminology, OAuth 2.0. So uh, this is the industry standard RFC 8, 7, uh, 6749 uh, that enables the applications to gain access to the user's resources without knowing user's credentials. That's the key underlying point there. Why OAuth? Why OAuth? Many times people have asked me. The key point here is app needs to be able to access resources, but the app shouldn't have the credentials of the user. Because the moment app needs to get the credentials of the user, there is whole other uh, complexity comes with it. Like what happens when the user changes their credentials? Like how good is the app to keep, secretly keep those credentials, right? So that's why this OAuth is very, very, um, suitable for this particular scenarios where you want to be able to access the resources of the user 
on behalf of the user, but without knowing the user's credentials. And the second, the S2S server to server, think of it as really an extension to an OAuth 2.0. And um, the primary reason why we did this extension, why we went down this path, is we want to be able to vouch an identity of the user from one app to the other app. So in a way, you could think of a high-trust app, right? So an app A should be able to tell to app B, saying the signed-in user, user who signed in to me, is Seisha. He's the user who signed in to me. And then app B should accept that, should be able to accept that so that it can do its own um, checks on its side as well. Now, in particular to OAuth, it doesn't actually vouch that identity. It just gives you access to the resources, and it has a very limited resources, what you can do. This extension allows us to say, I can actually tell you what the user is so that the app B will trust me and then go forward with it. It's more like a high-trust app that it can do. So it's, that's why we call it as an extension to the OAuth. The last one is uh, application principle. Now, this has been around there for many years, but is, now it is coming to the front line a lot. Because so far in Active Directory, most of the time you heard about users and groups, pretty much, right? You know, I have the so many user principles that I have in my Active Directory, and when users signed into SharePoint, here is identity they use. But now with this whole app model and with this uh, OAuth scenarios, the application principle becomes also an important identity information. So now we have both user identity and the app's identity. So you need to be able to reason about both of them, right? So that's the key, uh, another uh, terminology that is actually coming forward. It's not a new thing. It's been around. Uh, many of you might know like, how the delegation act as scenarios working in SharePoint 2010. But I think with this particular platform, S2S, we are bringing it forward, saying keep it always two things in mind, user identity and the app identity. It's okay. Is it the same as service principle names? It's very similar to that, yes. In fact, it is SPN. And you can, I will show the format of how the app principle identity is. So let's see how the S2S is implemented in online. So I said there are three major categories, online, on-premise, and hybrid. So let's start with online first. And key thing, every, um, every uh, category, I will share with you what were our design goals when we started off this whole uh, effort, right? It was two years ago when we started off. What were our design goals that we set forward? So the first one is, for the online uh, particular category of scenarios, use a trust broker between the online apps or online workloads instead of a direct trust. So instead of app A trusting app B directly, start trusting a trust broker. Have a person in the middle who can be acting as a trust broker for two apps. Why did we do that? Well, in order to allow a flexible design and architecture so that in the future, I don't you know the apps trusting other apps it's going to be a complexity to involve an individual app has to take care of so many trusts, especially in the online world when so many marketplace apps come into the picture and so many other apps that you want to bring it in. You cannot just keep having those information inside a single app and then try to manage all those apps' trusts. Instead, it's a, there's a one guy, trust broker, who we always say, um, as long as that particular trust broker knows about that app and you can issue a token for that app, that's, good. that's a good way to go, so that you can add more apps trust easily for a single app itself. Um, the second major aspect is actually the performance-optimized uh, token issuance. So every time, as you can imagine, this token is going to be floating around for every request that you're sending from app A to app B. So we have optimized it. We took it into consideration from performance perspective and optimized it in such a way the design is really we cached the S2S specific token. I'll go to the details next slide on how we did it. Um, so that only once in like every 12 hours, we actually go back to the trust broker and get a new token if we have to, right? So that's the design uh, from the beginning. Performance is a key thing for us. The second major thing is, as I said earlier, is the key thing, the extension why we did for OAuth is high trust app, you need to be able to vouch and user identity. They has to be able to tell the other app, the user who signed in is Seisha, right? So that's another key design principle from the beginning. We mentioned that. The last one is about application principles. So as I said, there's always now going forward both user identity and the app identity. Where does this app principles exist or should exist, right? So it has to be in a single place. It is mastered so that if there are um, complexity of maintaining those app principles is specific to that one place, and you have an authoritative source that you can always go back and say, does this app exist or not? So the app principles are sourced in the single master source. In case of online, MSODS, which is the Microsoft Online Directory Service, 
Think of it as the Cloud Active Directory. That's the source for all the application principles. Very similar to in your on-prem, Active Directory is your source primarily for the user identities. Similarly, for app principles in the cloud, we use MSODS as the uh, master for the uh, application principles. And then, as I said, all these S2S app principles need to exist in that MSODS, right? Because that's where we always go and you know, check for and make sure that app principle exists before we issue a token from a trust broker perspective. So let's dive into the actual flow so then you can actually um, connect all these dots together and, and understand a little bit more on why these design goals, how we, how we made these design goals, actually. So first of all, in this um, um, flow, there are a couple of components I want to call out. So as I mentioned, MSODS is uh, the key source, master source of app principles. And then ACS, which is the trust broker, right? And when I say trust broker, that means exchange online here. Trust is there's a data line that goes to ACS. So that's a trust line. And then SharePoint online trusts ACS as well. So you can see both online uh, apps are trusting ACS as a trust broker. So this is a prerequisite. Like when you go and sign up for Office 365 um, Enterprise E3 tenant, this is all done for you already. This is all set up already for you. This is, we, this is how we set up the um, SharePoint online and the Exchange online tenants so that they actually have an ACS instant associated with it and MSODS instant associated with it, and it has the necessary app principles already configured for you. Okay? This all happens done um, during the provisioning time. Now, this sync operation over here, so that's really the application principles getting synced from MSODS to the ACS. So remember I said MSODS is the master of the all the application principles, right? So those principles has to get synced to the ACS so that when the request comes in for a token, it knows what our principles are available, are already available in the MSODS. So these are the key components and the key prerequisites uh, that we basically implement upfront when you in a subscribe for a tenant. Let's go through the flow and then see how this, uh, how this kind of flow through in uh, detail. So Peter at Cantoso is uh, signing into SharePoint Online, and I'm taking a scenario here, the task sync scenario. So I have a single place in SharePoint. I want to view all my tasks. So whether it's in Exchange, I have created some tasks or, or some other place, I want to sync them into the SharePoint one place, and I want to see all the tasks in, in single portal page in my task list in SharePoint, right? That's the scenario. So Peter signs in, and he gets into his My Tasks list in SharePoint. And what happens is, at that point, it needs to, SharePoint Online has to uh, bring the share Exchange Online tasks that are in Exchange Online as well. So the way it does is, SharePoint Online, at that point, make a call into the ACS saying, I'm SharePoint Online, and it authenticates itself, right? Remember the daughter trust line that I said? So that really a certificate exchange happened during that, trusted, um, during that trust establishment. So when SharePoint Online goes to ACS, it basically says, I'm SharePoint Online. Here is a self-issued token that I have. And also it says, I want to talk to Exchange Online over there. That's the endpoint that I want to talk to, to get the task list for this user. Can you give me an S2S token to talk to the uh, Exchange Online? OK? So that's the step number two. That's what the request is going in. So there are two things happening here. It authenticates itself as SharePoint Online, and then it tells the ACS, I want to go and talk to Exchange Online. What's the endpoint it want to talk to? Okay? Those two information are critical for ACS. Now, as a trust broker, in step three, ACS, first of all, is going to validate, is it indeed SharePoint Online at Contesto uh, or not? So it's going to validate that authentication that SharePoint is giving as a token. And then it's also going to say, what is the endpoint that is hitting Exchange Online endpoint? Is it indeed something that it knows of, right? It has to know that endpoint exists, and it has to know the Exchange Online app exists, app principle exists. So that's the two key things it will check as well. Once both are validated, then the trust broker will issue an S2S token to the SharePoint Online that is intended for that particular endpoint for that particular Exchange Online uh, endpoint itself. So you cannot use the same thing to talk to some other app principle, let's say Link Online, or some other online workloads. So that's, or, the token is intended only for that particular uh, Exchange Online. So far so good? OK, so that's the step three there. And then in step four, and this is another critical piece here. So we talked about apps so far, right? Because ACS you know, takes care of, yes, I know SharePoint Online. Yes, I know Exchange Online. Let me issue an S2S token for it. 
But then I say there's another key piece that S2S, which is we need to be able to vouch and use that identity, right? Peter is the person who signed in to SharePoint Online here. So SharePoint has to tell to Exchange somehow saying, the user who signed in to me is Peter at Contoso. So in step four, SharePoint Online, before it sends that S2S token over to Exchange Online, it's going to augment, it's going to append that user identity information, saying it is Peter at Contoso who signed in to me, and his UPN is this, his SMTP address, email address is this, and his SIP address is this. Those are the kind of identity claims that it will tag along. Now it goes back to our claims infrastructure. Remember I said it's all built on top of claims infrastructure. So the S2S token, when you think about it, there are actually two portions to it. There's an inner token, which is the one the Exchange SharePoint Online gets from ACS during the dance in the step number three, right? Basically, it says, I'm Exchange SharePoint Online. I want to talk to Exchange Online. Give me a token. That's the inner token. And then there is an outer token, which is the claims about the user that SharePoint want to vouch to the Exchange Online. So that's the additional claims it adds outside the token. So those are the two portions in an S2S token. That's what is arrives in Exchange Online. Okay? So now on the Exchange Online side, it has to first, it will validate that the token indeed is issued, the inner token is indeed issued by the trust broker. Right? Because that's the only guy it knows, right? It doesn't know who SharePoint Online is. All it knows is just the trust broker, ACS. So the first thing it will do is, is it indeed issued by ACS? If it is, it will accept it. If it is not, it's going to throw access denied, right? So in this case, it is indeed issued by ACS, it will accept it. The second thing it does is, remember I said the endpoint it is talking to? So the ACS says, this is the endpoint that I gave the token for, and then in the outer token, the SharePoint also says the same endpoint. It has to say the same endpoint. So you cannot say, go to ACS, get a token from exchange, for exchange only for an endpoint, and then in the outer token, you say, oh, I want to talk to some other endpoint. It will get rejected. So you see how the security is kind of made intertwined within the same single token. And we make sure it's indented for the same application and for the same endpoint. And Exchange Online will verify that, those points, two points. If both are true, it is issued by ACS, as well as it is the endpoint that is intended for, then it will accept the user uh, identity that is there in the outer token. In this case, Peter at Contoso. And then Exchange Online will go off and do the bring in the user identity and make sure the user has permissions. And then in this case, SharePoint Online principal also has permissions to do this job. So when it does the authorization check, again, going back to my initial uh, comment, it has two identities, right? It has user identity and the app identity. So the app identity is the inner token. And then the user identity is the outer token. So it, it actually checks authorization on both of them. And then only it will allow access to the resources. I'll pass that for a minute. So silence. I just want to make sure is there so far so good? OK. Yes? Actually, let me give you a mic so that everybody can hear you. Sorry. Uh, that's OK. Thanks. So if the, uh, the user claims yep. um, were created by SharePoint Online, not ACS, because they're in the outer token, that's when correct. they're handed off to Exchange Online, does that mean Exchange Online needs to trust SharePoint Online no, no. to issue those user claims? Um, well, because it's an S2S principle, right? It is an S2S app principle. By definition, S2S app principles can vouch for user identity, right? When you go to ACS, you get an inner token. There is a claim in the token from ACS that says this app principle is trusted for delegating user identity. There is actually a claim inside the token. Okay. When Exchange Online receives that token, and it says it's signed by ACS, it will look at the claim inside the token, inside the token and say, do I have this trusted for delegation claim in that token? Then only it will accept the user identity outside. Got it. Yep? Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Right. I mean, the token, I mean, is signed by the ACS? Yes. It is signed by ACS. Yeah. This is the very kind of initial step, so I want to make sure that you get to it, because once you've got this part, the rest of the session is very going to be streamlined. So, Is MSODS hosted in the Windows Azure? Um, 
I believe right now it is in its own data centers, not in the Windows Azure, uh, but we are moving towards getting them all into the Windows Azure. See, if we deploy an app, we need to register our app principal in MSVDS. Yes. Right. Okay. That's correct. When you deploy in market, any apps, for example, it will get registered in MSODS automatically. As part of the app deployment, it actually gets registered in MSODS. So there's always a single source for app principles. That's MSODS. So whether if you go to seller dashboard, it will actually land in MSODS. It's behind the scenes. It will actually land in MSODS. Very similar to that, yes, you can say that, yeah. But it is online. It's online. It's a cloud active directory. But when it's on-premise, maybe in, in the... I'll get to the next one, yes. I just want to make, this looks like you guys have got it, what I was trying to get to for the online. I'll get to the on-premise in a minute, yeah. Okay, so let me... Uh... Because once you have the online figured out, like how it works, it's a very similar model for on-premise. So you'll actually see this very similar diagram, too. Okay, so an exchange online at this point accepts... Uh, the token that was sent to it, and on the step number six, it's going to basically return back the resources that are required, that are requested by the SharePoint Online. Okay? So that essentially ends the uh, full end-to-end -end flow on how the S2S authentication in online that we have implemented it in such a way so that you can basically securely transmit both the app identity and the user identity across the on online uh, or close. So all these specific uh, flows that I had, I have written it down as a take-home slide. So you can you know, sit down at home freely and listen, you know, kind of carefully see what individual steps are doing. Okay? So this is your take-home slide. And let me go into the quick demo just to show you how this we have implemented it. And some of you might have seen this. Um, So I have an Office 365 uh, tenant that is I have created already. So I'm going to uh, sign in to that Office 365 tenant. If I get my password correct, yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go to my uh, my uh, my site. And uh, I'm going to see the tasks that are available for me, that are assigned by me right there. So right now, I don't have any specific task right there. So I'm going to click to add a new task. So I'm going to call it as it's created in SharePoint so that we know when it is lands on Exchange side, it's actually the task that we created in SharePoint here. Uh, let me give a due date. How about over next year? Just pick something here. Okay, so I have created a task in uh, SharePoint. And now, behind the scenes, the flow that I just walked through is basically happening now. So it actually gets synced into the Exchange Online as well. So uh, get pushed out of the Exchange Online as well. So let me go back to the Exchange Online. Uh, usually, this sync task scenario, it takes about five minutes to get synced across the workloads. So let's see, in this particular case, we're just. So I'm now signing into my Outlook. Uh, to get to the Exchange Online. And click on my task list to see whether it saves. And voila, it's right, the one that I have created just now is actually showing up in the Exchange Online as well. So the tasks are getting synced as you create them or as you complete them either places across the workloads. And the flow that I just walked you through is the one that is um, enabling this scenario to, enable, to work, actually. Okay. Well, let me get back to the... All right, so that's great. That's online, I think, makes sense. Um, and those are all more confined environment, uh, so it's easier to deploy them there. But I'm sure you have many customers are still you know, heavily on on-premise. And is S2S supported for on-premise? The answer is yes, absolutely. It is supported for on-premise as well. Now, let's explore how the S2S scenarios are implemented for the on-premise cases, right? So again, let me uh, share with you the design goals that we started off with. So number one, 
There is no cloud dependency whatsoever when we enable the on-premise only S2S scenarios, right? That's the very key design goal that we put, uh, put up front. There's no reason and no whatsoever we have to have a cloud dependency, right? So in this particular case, that itself takes it to the path where you need to have some sort of trust between the apps so that you can have uh, S2S calls being made from one app to the other. So that's where that direct trust comes into picture. As many of you know, SharePoint 2010 already has a security token service, right? All of you know about it, yeah? Okay. So we just extended that security token service to be able to issue an S2S token as well. Okay? That's how we basically enabled the S2S specific uh, platform in the SharePoint. The second major design goal is, I'll keep repeating this again, S2S app needs to be able to vouch an user identity when it is making a call to an another app, right? So some of you might be familiar with the C2WTS, Climbs to Windows Token Service. How many of you are, yeah, love it? <laughs> um, so S2S is no need for C2WTS. There's no need for a Kerberos constrained delegation and you do this on the on-premise. And I'll go to the flow so that you can see why there is no need for it, because it's all based on the S2S trust that you have established, nothing to do with the Kerberos, okay? So that's the second major design goal is, you need to be able to vouch the user identity, but having said that, doesn't mean you need to enable Kerberos consent delegation. So we want to make sure that, that the complexity is not carrying forward, okay? The user profile application is the use, SharePoint's user, uh, um, information, that's kind of our repository. That's where we always go to get the information, more information about the user, okay? The third point is, there must be a single master of app principles for the on-premise, similar to what we did for online, right? So in online, what was the app principle master? MSODS. So for on-premise, we got to have one too, similar to the same model, right? So that's where we got this app management service. So that's the master source for on-premise app principles, okay? It's one of the shared surveys when you install SharePoint 2013, you will notice that it's get enabled for you. So you will enable it in order to do the S2S and OAuth scenarios. The last one, and it's a very important one, there is no hard dependency on the Active Directory forest topology or Kerberos constant delegation whatsoever. There is no dependency on that at all, okay? Um, and the way we enable that is by doing an S2S trust across the direct trust between the apps using the certificates itself. But let me make a different uh, twist at it. So as you know, there is a Windows in claims, we have three authentication methods. Windows claims, forms claims, forms-based authentication claims, and then we have a SAML claims, right? So the forms-based claims and the SAML claims there is no necessarily a need for Active Directory there, right? You can have user accounts in your own SQL membership provider or your own directory, doesn't matter, right? So even for those FBA claims and the SAML claims, S2S scenario is possible. So you can see why it is, there is no hard dependency on Active Directory topology here. And I'll go through the flow in a little bit detail so that you can see how we have actually implemented it, designed it, so that there's no actually a Kerberos needed in this flow. So those are the top four design goals that we put forward when we started for the on-premise uh, scenario, S2S scenarios. Let's go through the flow. Um, so here, I have uh, SharePoint on-premise and Exchange on-premise. And there are a couple of uh, components that I want to call out. So security token service, as you know already, this exists in uh, 2010, and we have enhanced to support S2S uh, token issuance as well in 2013. There's an app management service, which is the master for app principles in on-premise. So all the app principles has to exist in that app management service. User profile application, which is, this is our user-specific information. This is where we go and get it from, right? So if you do an FBA claims, or the sample claims, or Windows claims, doesn't matter. Make sure that the necessary information is, actually I should say, the latest information of the user is actually synced in this UPA. Okay, that's where we are going to look at for user information, okay? And then on the Exchange on-premise, we have actually implemented an OM for the security token service so that Exchange on-premise can also issue an S2S token, right? So 
we have pretty much kind of, you can see there's a direct trust, as the dotted line says here. There's a direct trust between the SDS in SharePoint side and the Exchange uh, Security Token Service OM as well. And by the way, I'll go to the next slide where I'll show the, what the config steps. Setting up this trust is really like one commandlet. That's what you have to run on both sides. Run a commandlet on SharePoint side saying, I am trusting that Exchange on-premise deployment and point to that Exchange on-premise metadata endpoint, which is basically a metadata endpoint is nothing but this security token service. It exposes a metadata document saying, I am so-and-so, and my signing cert is going to be this, and my app ID, which is the name identifier of that particular exchange on-premise deployment, is this. So it, it, used to, it will expose those information as a metadata document. And then basically from SharePoint side, you point to that metadata document using this commandlet, and I'll show you the commandlet. Then the trust is established for you for that particular exchange on-premise. So this is a cert, it basically it will, uh, the signing cert that the exchange on-premise uses, it will get uh, the public key of that will get loaded into SharePoint sites so that when the S2S token arrives, SharePoint knows that particular cert and it accepts that uh, signed, signed signature, signed token at that point. Okay? So those are the kind of prerequisites. And obviously, this is on-premise setup, so you have to set this up on both sides. This not automatic letting happen here. Um, so primarily, the trust establishment is the key thing that you will set up and then make sure the UPA is up to date and synced to the whatever the user repository that you have. Um, so those are the key aspects to remember when you are configuring for on-premise and S2S scenario. So let's go to the flow now. The scenario that I'm picking here is the e-discovery scenario. Um, the scenario is basically um, Peter signs into SharePoint and he wants to be able to search and put a hold um, on let's say, an exchange mailbox. So that's basically the scenario here. Um, this is primarily intended for the uh, legal and lawyers uh, informs. So Peter signs in to uh, his e-discovery site on the SharePoint, and uh, he's triggering a query for a word, and then gets back the results on the exchange. He wants to get back what all the exchange mailboxes that actually uses that term as well, right? So that's where the S2S come into play. Not only within SharePoint, he also wants to know what are the mailboxes in exchange on-premise uh, on uses that term as well. So the way it works is he's started the query there in SharePoint on-premise. In step two, security token service in SharePoint, it issues an S2S token. Since there is a direct trust here, it itself issues I am SharePoint on-premise, which is an inner token that is, it creates for itself. And say, I'm signing it by, with my certificate. The fact that it's a trust, Exchange on-premise will accept that token. And then it will add the additional outer token, which is the user information. Yes, I was waiting for somebody to <laughs> help me out. <laughs> so you add an outer token, which is the user information. So in this case, Peter at Cantoso is getting added, OK? So in step three, that's where um, it's getting added to, the token is getting created in STS, as the outer token is added, and that's the S2S token that gets sent to Exchange on-premise. And in this case, Exchange on-premise, the, the validation logic is exactly the same. It checks, do I have the token that is given by my trusted, one of my trusted um, issuers that I have, right? That's what it checks with the inner token itself, which is assigned by, in this case, SharePoint on-premise certificate, right? And then it also checks, going back to Mike's point, does it have the trusted for claims, trusted for delegation claim inside the inner token? Only then it accepts the outer token claims, which is about the users, right? And then the third point, which is the, what is the endpoint that it is going into? So it makes sure that the endpoint that is hitting is also matches between inner token and the outer token, okay? The validation logic is exactly the same. There's no difference between online and the on-premise, okay? So in step five, exchange on-premise, do those checks. Once it accepts the token, and then it follows through with its own authorization checks, like does the user have permission? Does this app, uh, SharePoint on-premise app principle have permission? It does both the checks, and then it will return back the result, saying here are the mailboxes that are having the word that you searched for. That's the step number six, where it will return back. Okay? So that's what under the hood happens in the on-premise S2S scenario when you just go and search, when you search for the word in an e-discovery page. I'll pause there for a minute. Any questions? Yes, sir. I'll uh, quickly come down. Hold back. 
because this is probably the next one will be, I'll be going a little bit. Thank you. Yeah? When the uh, uh, user logs in, he already uh, gets his claims yes. provided. So why do you need to use a profile service application to add claims? A great question. Um, so the question, so the reason why the user profile is important is I followed, I walk you through the flow when SharePoint is calling Exchange. But imagine Exchange is calling SharePoint, right? So the, the starting point is Exchange. I'm calling to SharePoint. So when the call comes into SharePoint, we do the same validation check. Was it signed by SCS, uh, as trusted issuer or not? And then we see the claim is there or not inside the claim, trusted for delegation. And then we accept the user identity outside. So what I mean by accept is, all that user information has, outside outer token has, is just the UPN or the SMTP of the user. But that's not enough, right, for doing all the rest of the SharePoint scenarios. So what we do is, we look at those identity claims that are outer token, we look back to UPA saying, hey, by the way, here is the identity claims I have for this user. Can you give me his profile? And then we actually rehydrate that user in SharePoint on-premise. In a way, you can think of, we want to make sure the scenario is as if the user is signed in to SharePoint on-premise, because that's the only way we can guarantee the rest of the pipeline in SharePoint, it will just work with respect to authorization and so on. So the token, outer token contains only the identity claims. It doesn't have all the information about the user. It doesn't have, let's say, for example, all the groups that the user belong to. Is that the question? Yeah. Kerberos is often implemented to support a multiple hot data fetch scenario. Okay. Can you speak to that scenario in this context? So uh, um, if you want to do the multiple hops, uh, like, for example, SharePoint now, once it is arrived on the SharePoint side, I want to call to someone else from SharePoint with the same information. It's going to be the same story what we have today, which is basically if the other app accepts S2S token, then you can build an S2S token and give it to that app. Or you can do the typical DCS, WCF model, because user identity is, like I said, is as if the user is signed in already. So the rest of the pipeline should just work as if the user is signed in. So it will work the same way as it is today. In addition, you can enable S2S calls too, provided that external service accepts S2S as well. Yep. Okay, so that's the on-premise story, it's the full detail. And uh, let me, again, for individual steps that I've walked through, I have it in the slide, it's a take-home slide. You can uh, go through the details at, um, at home. And let me move on to the so couple of, oh, sorry, go ahead. If we don't, if we don't have exchange, if we want to fill out custom applications. Yes, that's my second part of the uh, session. Yes, I'm getting there. Um, so configuration steps, so this is on-premise, so you have to configure both SharePoint on-premise and Exchange on-premise, and here are the quick high-level steps what we need to do uh, in order to configure S2S. So the first one is, you know, um, trust establishment between Exchange and the SharePoint on-premise. So in layman's in layman terms, it's the certificate stuff, right? Basically, you pass in a certificate to a given commandlet, and in the SharePoint side, the commandlet name is new SP trusted security token issuer. So is one addition to all many of you are familiar with new SP trusted identity token issuer. Now this one is a security token issuer, basically. And then on the exchange side, we have a, a commandlet called new partner application. So that's how we establish trust from exchange to the shared one. Okay? Then the second major thing is permissions for the principles. So keep in mind, not only user identity is involved here, there is also an app identity. So you need to make sure the permission is granted for that app principle as well. So that's the second step, permission for the app principles. In other words, allowing app A to do access to app B. In uh, SharePoint side, you can, there is a set SP app principle permission. As the name implies, it is setting a permission for an app principle in, exchange, in SharePoint. So you can set the permission that you need for on the SharePoint side. And then on the exchange side, we have a similar one, like I think set partner application. That will set the necessary permission as well. The last third step is really depend on your scenarios. The scenario specific uh, settings. Um, for example, I walk through e-discovery and I walk through task sync. Individual scenarios, they have their own scenario steps. You would have to configure them to make sure the scenario is light up for the on-premise. Okay? All right, so let's move on to the... Um, hybrid, which is the next topic that I'm going to cover. So we covered online, we covered on-prem. Now the question is, how do we do it in hybrid? 
And uh, how many of you have uh, gone to the hybrid sessions from Brad and so on? OK, so a couple of you. So let's see how the, um, both combining on-premise and online we have implemented in the hybrid scenarios. So the, again, the design goals that we put out for number one, the platform, first of all, the key goal is it enables SharePoint to the SharePoint hybrid and also allows other app principles. So what I mean by that is the first order of business is let's make sure SharePoint on-premise can talk to the SharePoint online and vice versa. Right? Between the same workload, same app, you can do the hybrid calls. But it doesn't mean that we need to confine to the SharePoint app principles. Right? We also want to make sure there's no restriction in the design. Oh, only SharePoint can do the hybrid calls among each other. Or SharePoint can accept only hybrid calls from other SharePoint. Right? So that's our first design goal is make sure it works, number one, as a priority. But at the same time, don't restrict it only for the app principles of SharePoint. The second major one is there is no compromise. This is a very important one. There is no compromise on the user identity information in hybrid STS, S2S. So what I mean by that is when you sign in to SharePoint on-premise, you sign in with your Active Directory account, that's for example, right? Now, when you make a hybrid call to SharePoint online, in online, the same Active Directory account may not exist, meaning the Active Directory account are associated with the SIDs. Right? Security identifiers. That's your on-premise identifier for a given user in Active Directory. When you go to the online, there is no kind of syncing happens from that on-premise CD to this online. So you need to be able to somehow also map to something user, an online user, at the same time, make sure that he's getting all his user profiles in online as well. Right? So you need to make sure there's an identity mapping happens from when you go from on-premise to online, or vice versa. Like, for example, in online case, we use org ID to sign the user in, right? At the end of when you finish signing in from org ID, you get a PUID, which is the personal unique identifier, which is not the same as your on-premise SID, which is a security identifier, you see? So on the online, we have a PUID, which is the personal unique identifier that is issued by an online ID provider, which is org ID. On premise, you have a SID, which is issued by your own on premise AD. So, what are the other things we can do? What, how do we map these two users? It's the same user, but we need to be able to map them, right? So, that's why we introduce, like, we include additional claims, identity claims, like um, UPN, SMTP address, and the SIP address of that user itself. And those properties are indeed getting synced to the online too. From on premise, they get synced to online too. And you will be able to map them around that. So that's our current design of the 15. So I'll go through the flow, then you will see uh, how it is being done. The third one is, yes, I'm, it's, hybrid is cool. I can go ahead and enable it. But that should not affect the existing on-premise scenarios. The one I just walked through with the on-premise S2S, if you are already running and going on, now I go and enable hybrid, suddenly that on-premise is broken. We don't want to have that happen, right? So when you enable hybrid, the existing on-premise scenarios should be intact. It should not be affected, right? The fourth point is primarily use a trust broker instead of a direct trust. So think of it this way. Anytime when there is a cloud information, is cloud is involved, in the hybrid case, there is an Office 65 involved, always use a trust broker. Because once you include the cloud, the apps can be many different apps that you want to bring it in. So you just want to make sure, use the trust broker. So the only case that you don't need a trust broker is the case when you are just doing everything on-premise, just on-premise only. So you don't need a trust broker at that case. For both online and for hybrid, you will want to go through the trust broker. And the last point is, again, going back to the app principles, it has to be sourced in a single master. Now, in this case, since it's a hybrid, it needs to be sourced in MSODS. OK? So that's the key uh, design goals we put forward. And um, that really helped us you know, making sure we can achieve these requirements based on the S2S designs that I have called out so far. And I'm, let me go through the flow, detailed flow on the hybrid, how we are doing it. And this is also going to be very critical when I go to the next category, which is the apps. When I do the apps and I'm trying to do this hybrid, how it's going to work. It's a very similar thing. You're just going to change the SharePoint with your, your own app name. That's what you're going to do. So let me walk through the SharePoint one first. So the prerequisites here are, so SharePoint Online, um, it has 
like I said, MSODS is the app principal uh, master source, and it gets syncs to the ACS. And then it also has a sync, you know, as you know, the SPODS is one of our, our own directory store in the SPO. And then in the SharePoint on-premise, the trust between the SharePoint on-premise, the dotted line, it goes all the way back to the ACS. So the SharePoint on-premise has to trust the trust broker, which is the ACS. And SharePoint online is also trusting the ACS. So basically, both SharePoint online and SharePoint on-premise now trust a single party, the trust broker. Okay? And then you can see there is a new um, uh, sync pipeline here from your local on-premise Active Directory to the MSODS. Now, this is the sync to basically syncing your user attributes, like the UPN, SMTP, and the SIP address that I was mentioning. Because those are the user attributes that are going to be useful for mapping the user identities from on-premise to online and vice versa, right? So that's why there is a dirt sync uh, happening here to sync your user attributes from Active Directory to that MSODS, okay? And then, let's see, there is a uh, sync of this particular one right here, like from going from SharePoint on-premise. That's really about your signing certificate. So. When SharePoint, if you remember the ACS trust broker, the way that you authenticate to it is you have to give them something to ACS saying, I'm SharePoint on-premise, um, and I want to talk to SharePoint online, right? So the way it does is it creates its own token and then give it to the ACS. In order, to, in order for ACS to accept such a token, it needs to know who this SharePoint on-premise is, who this SharePoint Contoso on-premise is. So that's why there is, a sync, there is a sync pipeline here, which is really what you're doing is you are basically adding your signing cert of your local on-premise SharePoint STS to the MSODS uh, SharePoint principle. Because that way, when you show up, when the SharePoint on-premise show up to ACS, ACS knows who you are, and then it can authenticate you based on that signing cert. You are with me? Yes? Sir, the trust would do that. I mean, why that trust think, uh... So the trust, the, the, the question was, you know, wouldn't the trust would do it automatically? So the trust is really, you are basically trusting the ACS issued token, the SharePoint on-premise. When the token is coming from ACS to SharePoint on-premise, SharePoint on-premise should trust that token that is issued by ACS. That's what the trust is doing. The trust is basically saying, SharePoint on-premise trusts ACS. That means whenever the token is issued by ACS, it will accept it. But I'm talking about the other way. SharePoint, no, it's not a two-way trust. It's a one-way trust. Because ACS now has to trust SharePoint on-premise, right? So that's what this particular, uh, in a way you can say it's a kind of a trust you are establishing by providing your signing key. Okay, yes? What is the architectural thought about having SPODS and what is it achieved in this particular MSODS ACS scenario? So, yeah, yeah. So the question was, like, what is the uh, role of this SPODS here instead of, um, what is the purpose of that really in the online cases? So the reason why we have it is primarily, since the MSODS is an active directory structure, and we can pull in the data directly, sync the data directly from there to SPODS, and then we can pull it in to the, if we want to, when the user signs into online, we want to add additional information about the user, we can just look at the SPODS and bring it from there. This is kind of the one uh, immediate step we can get to from the active directory. So I'll, um, yes. It's in online, exactly. So in online cases, you can say it's, it does the job that user profile is doing in on-premise. It does the job for online when you are signing in. There is no user profile service in online? There is a user profile service in online. I'm talking about when you sign in a user. So SPODS is, think of it as when the user signs in, all we get from ArgID, from MSODS, or ArgID is just the PUID of the user, right? All it says is the PUID is so-and-so for this user. There are additional attributes of that user itself that are already available. Like, for example, you, you did a sync from Active, Active Directory to the MSODS, right? You did a sync about your SMTP, SIP address, and so on, right? So those exist in MSODS, and we need to be able to pull those information as part of your sign-in to uh, SharePoint Online itself. And that's where the MSO, SPODS come into picture. We don't go to MSODS. Instead, we just go to our local directory and get it from there. What are the additional information? So think of it when you sign into Office 365, SharePoint Online, 
think of it as that is the SPODS is the one that is helping us augment additional information about the user. We don't have to go to the user profile of the case. We are thinking about now how do we emphasize a little bit more in the future so that we can actually you know, streamline the thing with respect to user profile and so on, but that's in the down the road. Provided if you have all the information about the user there, right? It has to sync all the information in the user profile online right away. And the user profile may not be there for all the users that are there. There are specific reasons when you have your user profile in the, uh, I think only when you have a my sites created, that's when you will have a user profile. So, so in the interest of time, I'm going to keep going because I have, I know you, many of you want to do the app stuff as well. I'll, if you can field your questions, I'm happy to stay after the session. I'll answer the questions, okay? All right, so let's go to the quickly of flow. So these are the prerequisites that get set up. And as you can see, the line above, the online stuff is all done automatically for you when you sign up for Office 65. But the lines that always start from on-premise, the administrator um, would have to do. The on-premise administrator would have to do. So basically, there are three things here. You need to do the AD sync, which is using the DER sync. You need to establish the trust between, uh, between, between your SharePoint on-premise and ACS. And then you also need to sync your signing cert, on-premise signing cert to your uh, MSODS tenant, okay? And Peter, so in this case, the scenario I'm taking is the SharePoint um, hybrid search scenario. So user Peter at Kandose is uh, signing in to SharePoint on-premise, and now let's say he's triggering a search for a query SharePoint conference, for example, right? So what happens in this case? In the step two, So SharePoint on-premise basically issues uh, a token, self-authenticates self itself by issuing a token, and then tells to ACS, I'm SharePoint on-premise at Contoso, and I want to talk to SharePoint online at Contoso. I'm emphasizing Contoso because it is only per tenant. Within the tenant is what you can do at this point, okay? There is, I will see on the slide where you can say there's no cross-tenant call supported. So it's only between, the, just within the tenant you can do this call today, okay? So in step two, it says, I want to talk to SharePoint online. And then ACS, uh, it, accept, it sends a request to the ACS. And then ACS validates, yes, it is in SharePoint on-premise that I know of. And I also know SharePoint online Contoso tenant, a Contoso instance. So it accepts bo uh, the, infra, the request and issues an S2S token to the SharePoint on-premise. And then the SharePoint on-premise in step four it, it gets the inner token from ACS, then it adds the outer token, which has the information about the user. Now, in this case, it's going to add whatever the logged on user's information is. So it will have the name identifier of the user, which is basically his SID, right? He signed into the local on-premise active directory, so he's going to have the SID of the user. And in addition, it's also going to add what are the user attributes, like UPN, SMTP, and SIP address. It will add those attributes as well. This is the very key point to remember. If you're building your LOB hybrid app, it is not enough to just pass in the SID of the user because there's no way online knows about that information. So you have to pass this additional information like SMTP or the UPN of the user that already is also available in online, okay? So it adds those information as the outer token and then sends that S2S token over to um, SharePoint Online. Now SharePoint Online, the fact it trusts um, ACS will accept the token, and then it returns back the results. Again, when, it's, when I say it accepts the token, it does the same validation checks. Is it issued by ACS? Yes. Is it issued, is it for, uh, intended for SharePoint online endpoint? Yes. Is it for, trusted for delegation for the user identity? Yes. Then only to check the user information, um, that it accepts the user information in the outer token. Okay. So that's the flow. Now I called out the important design goal, which is hybrid is cool, we can get it enabled. Now at the same time, we don't want the uh, existing on-premise to, um, to be intact. We want it to be intact, right? So if you have a scenario with the SharePoint on-premise and Exchange on-premise, it should continue to be intact. So that's what this particular slide is emphasizing. It doesn't matter what you did in the hybrid side, the on-premise only scenarios will continue to work. Okay. So again, let me... Uh, we have all this flow detailed, and then you should be able to take the take-home slide, uh, which is, I believe, the next slide. Um, there are key points to remember. So as I mentioned, the on-premise environment, there is steps involved to configure and enable hybrid. 
Um, first one is Active Directory uh, dirt sync needs to happen, and also the SharePoint on-premise needs to get registered into the MS ODS, and then SharePoint on-premise has to trust ACS as a trust broker. And then the user identity mapping, which is also an important piece in the hybrid case, which is make sure that the UPN, SMTP, and the SIP address of the user, user are in sync with whatever the identity uh, store that you are using. And under the, this is the take-home slide for all the steps, so you can uh, literally look into it. Now, let me also call out, we talked about online, on-premise, and hybrid. What are the not-supported topologies? So the first of all, the cross-premise or cross-product S2S calls. So what it means is if you have a SharePoint on-premise need to talk to the exchange online, uh, or as, you know, those kind of cross-premise cloud product calls, are the ones that are not supported. And uh, we are working on it, getting it, getting it ready. We need to do more validation and testing and make sure that it is in place. Um, and we will have the documentation on how do you actually enable this as well. Uh, but at this point, as of RTM, as of RTM, it is not in a support list. The second one is the cross-tenant. So if you remember, I emphasized on Contoso. So it's the same tenant is what you are making calls in the hybrid one, not a cross-tenant calls. So that's also not supported. The S2S call between the SharePoint uh, non-active directory and for Exchange or Link. Like, for example, Exchange is really dependent on the active directory as an, as an identity store, as a user. So whereas on the SharePoint side, we do support forms-based authentication and SAML-based authentication, right? So if I have a forms-based authentication on my SharePoint side, I want to do an S2S to an Exchange, it's not going to work because Exchange doesn't know what the user is unless the user is actually in active directory somewhere. Right? So keep that in mind. Um, and the last one is, and as you know already, is web apps are need to be configured with client-based authentication. So if you enable classic authentication, it's not supported it's, uh, for this S2S case. Yes? Quick question. So if, let's say I do the forms-based authentication against Active Directory. Can uh, S2S convert that forms-based authentication token? Yes. The question was, if I have a forms-based authentication in SharePoint side, but my form membership provider is going against LDAP Active Directory, and then on the exchange side, will it accept it? The answer is yes. As well, that's why I said Active Directory. But typically, when I say forms with authentication, it usually means SQL membership providers. So people have a lot of SQL membership providers are their own custom membership providers. So that's why I'm explicitly saying, if you have those, and exchange has no knowledge of those user identities, then in S2S won't work in this case. But if the identity store is Active Directory in both cases, then it will be fine. Yes, you can be able to do that, yeah. OK, so this is all the cross, um, on, like built-in, out-of-the-box scenarios. And let's question, let's move on to the next major topic, which is primarily uh, LOB apps. Does it actually possible to do the LOB S2S apps as well? Absolutely, it is possible. And reason is, it's all based on the standard protocols, OAuth 2.0 and the extension that we have built. And the extension that we have built is also, there is a profile documents that explains how, what are the expected claims inside the token and so on. So you can follow that as long as your app is compliant with that particular profile documents and the OAuth 2.0 spec, it can also participate in the S2S ecosystem, okay? So let's uh, get into the uh, little bit in detail on the SharePoint on-premise. I have an LOB app that I want to talk to SharePoint on-premise. I'm going to go through just the design goals, and then I'll show a quick demo on for the hybrid app um, so that it will, be com it will cover both aspects. So for on-premise, if I want to build an LOB app that talks to SharePoint on-premise, obviously the first thing is there shouldn't be any cloud dependency, right? You don't want to have specifically talking to ACS, get a token, and so on, because it's an on-premise app. So there's no cloud dependency. The second major thing is you need to establish a trust, direct trust, with the SharePoint on-premise. Remember the command that I mentioned, new SP trusted security token issuer? So you got to run that command led and trust your LOB S2S app on the SharePoint on-premise. So that whenever the app shows up to SharePoint on-premise, it knows who the S2S app is, and then it will accordingly allow you to get access to. And also the LOB app should be able to vouch the user to the SharePoint on-premise, right? As long as it's an S2S, as it as an S2S app principle, which is you establish a trust and that will enable you as an S2S app principle, then the app itself can be able to vouch the user identity to SharePoint. Having said that, 
it has to understand, the SharePoint has to know the user, right? The app cannot have its own user identity store. SharePoint has no knowledge about that identity store, but then you vouch the user identity, SharePoint won't be able to rehide the user. So the identity store of both the app and the SharePoint has to be the same. And then only you can vouch for user identity when you make the calls. Okay? The last point is, um, again, the design should be extensible so that the hybrid the app itself can make a call to a SharePoint online with the same exact code that it is doing for SharePoint on-premise. And I'm going to show you how we actually made it possible with it as well. Okay? And that's for on-premise design goals. Now let's see how we do it for online real quick. The design goals are, as I said, zero code changes on my app code in order to be able to talk to the SharePoint online in this S2S ecosystem. There are configuration changes, because it's a configuration you have to do for your app to be able to, to introduce it to the MSODS. So there are configuration things, but there's no code changes required. Okay? And the next one is using as trust broker. So if you want your LOB app to be more like a hybrid, then obviously it's online, so you need to have a trust broker. So you need to trust ACS as well. Okay? And then the app principle is mastered in MSODS, because whenever I say there's a cloud piece, there's also the app principle needs to exist in MSODS, so which means you would have to introduce the app into the MSODS. And I'll, sh I'll share with you after the talk the command list that I have used on what are the ones you can, in a, how do you add an app principle to MSODS and so on, so you can try it out at home as well, okay? And the last bullet point is, as I mentioned earlier, the app can vouch for a user identity such that the user can be mapped on the online. So when you make a call to SharePoint online from your on-premise app, you need to be able to say, this is user Seisha, and the SharePoint online needs to be able to rehydrate Seisha. So it has to have that additional information that you need to pass along so that the SharePoint online can rehydrate the user. So those are the top level uh, design goals. And let's switch to a quick demo. So what I have here is the contosodevs.sharepoint.com, which is my um, um, dev tenant that I have created in Office 365. OK. So it is up and running. So now um, I'm going to go quick on this one, because we have seen it many times already in the previous sessions, like creating an app using the Visual Studio template. So while I'm doing the exact same approach, I'm going to create a SharePoint app from a Visual Studio template. So create, click new project and app for SharePoint 2013. And I'm going to rename this as sample high trust app. Okay. Because the neat thing about this template is it comes up with all the necessary prerequisites, assemblies, and so on. So it's a good starting point. And now you can see here I'm pointing to my SharePoint online URL. So I, I want to basically make a call from my on-premise app to this SharePoint online URL. So I'll go through the kind of a quick code and then the configuration steps. And as I said, the configuration PowerShell scripts are I'll make it available so you can actually try it out as well. So here I'm going to choose is a provider hosted app. So it's going to spin up and uh, bring me the uh, application. There we go. The key important thing I want to call out here is the um, uh, app manifest file, so in which basically you need to provide the app settings and uh, as well as the web.config where you need to provide the app settings. So I have. Uh, already registered an app, so I'm going to take in uh, MSODS so that I can show you the hybrid one. So I'm going to take that modification, and override it in my app that I just created. So this is basically, I have registered an app ID already in MSODS. I want to make sure the same app ID is getting used for this app as well. So for example, if I go back to my Visual Studio, you can see there are some changes that have been made. And if you watch, the client ID is empty right now over here. So you can see that it is being filled in with the client ID. So this is the client ID, the app ID principle that I have already registered in MSODS. 
Okay? And then, as you can see, there is an associated signing cert for the app. That is this cert coming from here. And this is the cert that I have also introduced in MSODS, in ACS, so that it knows when this app calls to ACS to get a token, it knows what the app is. Okay? So the app is already introduced in the cloud, and both MSODS and ACS knows about this app's ID as well as the app's signing certificate. So that when it goes there, it knows who the app is. Okay? And there are a couple of uh, interesting, um, one interesting thing I want to call out in the token helper class, which I have added in a new uh, get S2S token using user identity. Uh, let me see if I can get to it. There we go. So this is, this is the important, this is the one of the function that does the hybrid dance. Basically, it will be able to get the response from the SharePoint, determine whether it is online or on-prem. If it is on-prem, it will use self-issue a token. If it is not uh, on-prem, then it will go and get a token from ACS, and then being able to present that token to it. A lot of details here, so I'm not going to go to the individual uh, details here. I'm going to share the code, and feel free to reach out to me offline. We'll go to the little bit details, okay? So now, when I go ahead and um, ex press F5 to get the app, so what needs to happen here is the URL is a SharePoint online URL, which means it has to know to get an ACS token, token from ACS, augment the user claims, send an S2S token to the SharePoint online, and then get back the results. So what I want to show you here is, like, since it's a, starting with a template, I say in the SharePoint online, yes, I trust this app so that it will get the necessary permissions. And when I execute the app, what I expect to see here is it shows me who the user is from the SharePoint online, just a plain vanilla simple sample. But the bottom line is it does the whole S2S dance of hybrid in order to actually get to this information from SharePoint online, right? Because the user is signed in and voila, now you can see it is actually the SharePoint online says contestor devs team site, and this is the user who signs in. This guy right here, you are in Federation Microsoft Online, that tells me it is an org ID issued token, and in fact, this ID right here is the PUID of the user that who signed in. So I'm able to map the user signed into on-premise. I can make it as to as call to SharePoint Online. Now SharePoint Online knows the online identity of the user, and that's what you are seeing here from that app. For that it shows that the user is a SharePoint Online user. So you can rehydrate as an online user, and you can do the necessary stuff from that point onwards. Cool? Yeah? Yes? And, and there is, there is a, two different, two major uh, PowerShell scripts to just get this set up, and then this whole code itself to actually make this dynamically. The same code, you can point to the SharePoint on-premise URL, and it will just work. The URL itself is the only thing that you have to change. Okay? Because the S2S token is, you are issuing a self-issued S2S token, and you access the SharePoint on-premise URL. Okay? Let me get back to the slides. And I think I'm going to... Um, so to summarize, we talked about deep dive on the auto box scenarios as well as the LOB applications, how it is possible to use the same identity platform to enable the apps to do the S2S calls to. Is that all for our identity platform? No. There's actually more to it. The way that we think about platform is all patterns inside the identity platform. And what I just covered in this session is the top two, the S2S incoming and the S2S outgoing. There are four other patterns that we have, and there are other sessions who have covered these patterns, as well as there are technet articles that explains what these patterns are. So just want you to make you aware that there are existing there are other patterns as well that you can use in the SharePoint 2013 identity platform. So with that, there are key takeaway messages. One is, out-of-the-box scenarios are the next level for cross-collaboration and cross-products uh, hybrid scenarios. The key, the key takeaway two is, there are a lot of new opportunities now for you to build the apps that can work uh, seamlessly between on-premise and the SharePoint online, and at the same time, get the power of S2S OAuth identity platform too. Thank you.